Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Project 52. In this episode, let's talk about Water Walker. So in this episode, I'll pick a particular uh, passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 32. So let's uh, explore the passage and Let's see what we can learn from the passage. So this is when uh, Jesus walked on the water. So in verse 22, a state immediately Jesus made the disciple get into the boat, go on ahead of him to the other side. Why he dismissed the crowd after he had dismissed him, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. So as we can see in the year, this is when uh, Jesus did the miracle when he uh, feed 5,000 people with uh, the boy lunch, which is uh, five loaves and two fish. While everybody was uh, leaving, when Jesus dismissed the crowd, uh, Jesus was the last person to leave. So this is, uh, I think this is a great leadership principle that we can learn in our life. He was the last person to lead, leave, and he sent his disciple to the other side, to cross on the other side. So he commanded his disciple to, to go on the uh, other side. And what did he do in that time? So he, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. So Jesus actually prayed. So Jesus went to pray. So basically Jesus recharged himself because he manifest as a human uh like he has uh, a human body so that is what jesus actually uh modeled that for us so there's a time where uh five thousand people were listening to him were around him but this is also a time when jesus was spending time alone by himself and that is the power of being alone the power of being alone. So Jesus actually, what did he do? He actually go and pray. He actually go and pray. And no one was with him. No one was with, uh, with him. So, and I do believe that uh, there's a time when people were around you and cheer you up. And there's also a time when you had to uh, seek uh, the will of God. You had to, we have to go and pray. And we had to cheer ourselves up. So there's not going to be anybody around us to cheer uh, us up. So we we have to recharge ourselves in the presence of God through prayer. So that's what Jesus did. Jesus was very humble. He doesn't say, I'm God and I don't need, uh, I don't need to hear from the Father. I don't re- need to recharge. I don't need to pray. Jesus was being very humble. Why he was a human being, he actually, uh, he actually prayed to the Father. So Jesus actually show unhumility. But here's the thing: the thing is that when Jesus sent his disciple to cross on the other side of the uh, the sea, what is the G- disciple does? The disciple obeyed Jesus' word, and he uh, and the crazy thing is that they actually. Uh, face the storm. They face the storm. So in verse twenty uh, three in part B, it said later that night he was there alone. Um, I mean in verse twenty four, and the boat was already considerable distant from the land and buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. The wind was against it. So they couldn't. Uh, they were in the middle of the well of uh, uh, God. Or Jesus, but they still face the storm. So, friend, that is the reality. That is the reality. And he, he, here's the thing: they were not only the way and the way and the wind was not only against them, but it is also against the word of God. Jesus told them to go on the other side. That's what the word of God is. But the wave, they were trying to stop the disciple. They were trying to stop the disciple. 
So we will face storm in life even when we follow the will of God. But we have to remain in his word. We have to believe in his word. Because Jesus will, uh, he will back up his word. He, he will remain in his word. Because he, he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. And he is also a promise keeper. He's also a promise keeper. So you, you might wonder in your life. You've been following Jesus. But you still have faced on financial problem. Your uh, family issue. It can be your uh, personal addiction. You still have faced those. And you say you do the will, you're following the will of God. You serve in your lo local church and you did everything you can in order to be in the, in the will of God. But friend, even the disciple, they were with Jesus. And right after that, they were actually obeying the command of Jesus. But they still face the, they still face the storm. And another one I wanted to point out is that Jesus loved to show up in the storm jesus loved to show up in the storm in verse 25 it says shortly before dawn, jesus went out to them walking on the water sorry walking on the lake when the disciples saw him walking on the lake they were terrified is a goat is a ghost they say and cry out in fear cry out in fear friend in life it's important to recharge it's important to prioritize our spirituality. Because with, with God, with Jesus, our journey can be further. And this, uh, I heard like uh, uh, some uh, will, uh, say that when you focus, uh, when you put spiritual first thing in your life, when you put like, let's say you prioritize spirituality in your life, they say, you wouldn't go further as you are expected. But in this particular uh, story, is in this particular event, is different. The disciple was the one who actually went ahead of Jesus. But later on, in the dawn, Jesus was with them. Jesus actually reached them. So basically, while they were already in their journey jesus was praying jesus was praying so prayer is the probably the faster uh, uh uh speed or data in the um entire earth so yeah so we had to prioritize uh spirituality and there's nothing wrong with prioritize spirituality it doesn't um make you being uh uh like late or anything but of course, we had to uh, prioritize spirituality. So, yeah, another one I wanted to point out is that Jesus loved to show up in the storm. So the, the disciple was uh, facing the storm. They were in the middle of the storm, and Jesus showed up. But the question is that when Jesus show up, can you see him? When Jesus show up in the middle of the storm, can you see him? Because if you don't see him, you would thought it's the, it's the devil. It's the work of the devil. Let's say if you were in, in a relationship and you really wanted to save that relationship. And sooner or later, after many years, you look back and you realize that God actually saved you for that toxic relationship. You didn't realize it was toxic. But when God show up in the storm, it's hard to see him. And we can have the wrong, we can assume that it's not God. Just as the disciple was, uh, the disciple uh, thought, they see Jesus and it, they thought it was a ghost. And, and yeah, we have to be, uh, we have to have the spirit of discernment. When Jesus show up, we have to believe that it was him. And when you are in, when you are facing, uh, yeah, when, when, uh, when you and I we are in in the middle of the storm, we had to be aware of that, because Jesus loved to show up in the storm. And guess what happened next? 
they cry out in fear. They did. They actually cry out in fear. But what happened next really uh, shocked me in verse 27. It say, Jesus immediately say to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Wow. So Jesus actually talked to them. They thought Jesus was a ghost. They actually talked to them. And this is when, uh, this is the lesson when we have to, uh, I wanted to focus on this uh, episode. So it said in verse 38, it said, Lord, this is when Peter speaking, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Tell me to come to you on the water. And what does Jesus, how does Jesus reply? Calm, he said. Just a simple word, come, come. So once Peter realized that it wasn't a ghost, it was actually Jesus, the one who picked him, who selected him as a disciple, and he asked to walk on the water with him. And I don't know what Peter want to do, what Jesus do. Here's, here's the reality. Peter's life is on the water. He grew up in the water. He has to deal with water. Uh, he's a fisherman. He has a uh, fishing business. So once he see uh, his master was walking on the water, he wanted to follow what his master did. But the re reality is that he has to do it with faith. And what is faith? In Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. So no one see it. No one know it. That's what we have to believe in and do it. If everybody see it, if everybody know it, then it would be called faith. So in the Old Testament, Esther, she didn't know that whether the king will hold up the scepter to accept her or not but she did it with uh, uh, a commitment she asked her people to pray for her to fast and she did it by faith and she she does realize that if the king doesn't accept her request she could get killed but here's the thing she goes for it she was taking a leap of faith a step of faith. So there's actually three types of people. So the first type of people is those who watch what happened. The second type of people is those who say, wow, that's amazing. That miracle is amazing. And the final, the third and final type of people is those who watch it and say, wow, that miracle is amazing. Let's do that. Let's make that happen. So which type of people are you in? Are you just standing on the side and say, wow, or just just watch it, watch what happened? Or are you are you the type of people who, who actually say, wow, that amazing, that is amazing? Or you actually someone who actually say, who actually watch it and say it is amazing and then who actually take an action? So Peter walked on the water while others are watching him. The other disciples were watching Peter. Yeah, they were watching Peter. So here, here is one of the things that I wanted to point out. So there's a time that we have to watch people. And there's also a time when people will, have, will come and watch us. There's a time to clap. And cheer people up. And there's also a time when people will come and cheer us. There's a time when we have to congratulate. When we yeah, when we have to congratulate our other. And this there will be there will come a time when people will come and congratulate us. You know, let's not live a life when we all we have to congratulate other. There is a biblical principle and it's called the law of sowing and reaping. The law of sowing and reaping. Whatever we sow, there's certainty that we will reap the seed that we sow. And 
Peter believed that he can do it through Christ, not himself. So we do the work, but God gave us the strength. He gave he 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 gave it he gave us the strength. So, what makes Peter a water walker? What makes Peter different from the other disciple? He's one of the uh the twelve. He he was selected. He followed Jesus. He heard the sermon. He witnessed the miracle, and he was in the boat. He was in the boat with the other eleven. So he was just an ordinary uh, person. But Peter was willing to uh, step up and take action. He was willing to stand up and take action. And sometimes, you know, when you try to be divergent, when you try to make a difference, you will look crazy. Imagine when he, when Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Tell me to come to you on the water. Why the other disciple was, Peter, the other, I, I am assuming that the other disciple might be like, Peter, you are crazy. Are you out of your mind? Like people will, will say you look crazy when you actually are passionate about something when you act when you uh, follow Jesus. But the reality is that Peter received a confirmation from Jesus. Jesus actually say say come. So that is a confirmation. So so uh we uh we do have to listen to people's voice when we hear God uh, like the voice of God. If Jesus call you. Just do it. If Jesus call you, just do it. Because people will tell you to people. People, uh, different people have different opinion. They will tell tell you, uh, different things. But you don't have to listen to them. Don't waste your time. Listen to them. You're not going to be a water walker. While the other were in the boat, Peter actually walks on the water. So they were afraid. But Jesus. So, uh, the thing they were afraid of, Jesus was, Jesus was walking on it. So, as I have said earlier, don't just, don't just, uh, uh, listen to other testimony. We need to have our own testimony. We need to, we need to see uh, a miracle in our life. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, I'm very, like. Uh, pleased and, and uh, satisfied with other testimony. Like I'm very touched by other testimony. But then I came to I came to realize that. But those are good testimony. I'm not saying uh, we should have listened to other testimony. I mean those other testimonies should be uh, uh, be a great witness, and it should uh, encourage us to experience it ourselves. So we need to have our own testimony. Like hearing other people, other people' testimony and how God has been blessing them is great, but we actually need to have our own uh, testimony. And the thing is that, uh, back to the story. So this, the thing is that uh, the disciple was uh, the disciple was afraid. Why Peter actually step up in faith when Jesus conferred that when Jesus uh, uh, command him to uh, come to him. So what happened next is what uh, is another great uh, lesson. Then Peter got down out of the boat, out of the boat, walked on the water, came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink and cry out, Lord, save me. So when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He was afraid of the wrong things. He was afraid when he saw the wind, the effect of the wind. He already, he saw it earlier. He already he saw it earlier, but he was still afraid because his focus. And then he once he, uh, he shift his focus on the things he was afraid of, he's beginning to sink. Yeah, he's beginning to sink. So. Who are those that have a strong faith? Have you ever have uh like have you ever asked that uh kind of question? Like to some uh 
man of God, a woman of God. Like, how come they have such a strong faith? Because they look upon God. They look upon Jesus. That is very simple. So how do you go from victory to victim? Just shift your focus. Just shift it. When you focus on God, there's a guarantee that there's a, 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 a victory is guaranteed for you. Just look at the story of David. He focused on God and he doesn't see the size. He focused on God and he, he doesn't see the size of Goliath. So in number, thir number 13, when Moses uh, sent out 12 spy to explore the land of Cana. So when everyone said no, we're just like a grasshopper to them. Then Joshua and Caleb said, we can do it. Our God is bigger than them. They have faith. They have faith. So friend, that is very uh, important and is a great lesson for us. We need to have faith. If you, if we really, we need to have faith, and we need to focus on Jesus. In Hebrew chapter twelve, verse two, it says, "Looking unto Jesus, the Author and the Finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hands of the throne of God." Jesus is the Author. And the finisher of our fate. And usually an, as an author. Before they write a book. They, they already know what they are going to write. In the last chapter of the book. So Jesus actually knows the whole story. He's uh, write, uh, written down the whole story. And we have to uh, believe in that. So friends. If you want it to be a water walker, if you want to be make a difference in life, first, we have to be different. We can't be like other disciple. Although we hear other the other disciple, they hear the word of God from uh they they get to hear Jesus sermon, they get to see the miracle. Not only that, they get to uh, actually perform the miracle themselves. But what make Peter different from the other disciple? He step up. He step up. He step up by faith and walk on the water. And he was the only disciple that actually walk on the water. That's amazing. That's what make Peter different. And I think that uh, that can be this, this that same principle. We can apply that into our life. Yes, we can apply that into our life. So what we can learn from Peter is that the focus. So once Peter sh uh, shift his focus from God to the wind, that's when he started to shift. Sorry, that's when he started to sink. So, yes, let's focus on Jesus. So... For the last part that I wanted to point out is that Jesus can shorten the distance. In John chapter 6, verse 21, John chapter 6, verse 24, 21, then they were willing to take him into the boat, and Im immediately the boat reaching the, sh uh, reaching the shore where they were headed. Wow. So immediately. The boat reach the shore. So it took them a, 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 a while in the middle of the lake. It took them a while. But once Jesus was in the boat, immediately, immediately, they reached the other side. They reached their destination. So in life, when we have Jesus in our life, when we accept him in our life, 
And when we walk with him, our journey will be so much quicker than we ever than we realize. So yes, Jesus can actually shorten the distance. What people have been working for so many years, you can receive it within a day. It is possible, friends. So be make a difference and be a water walker like Peter. So God bless you all. If this is your first time listening to uh, Project 52, I urge you to uh, maybe uh, go and subscribe uh, and share with your friends and maybe rate this podcast. I will uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you all.